Good evening. I'm Dr. Greenbrier Almond, and thank you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Each week on Channel 3, I'm happy to talk about this interface between Christianity and medicine. And tonight I'm going to talk about a very important topic. Uh, as school opens and as I serve on the Board of Education, I've had the privilege to be at our opening assembly uh, for the teachers and the service workers, and uh, we are right in the midst of uh, one of the most exciting times of our year as school returns and we get a new beginning and new students and as our superintendent uh, today said, Scott Lampinen said, uh, we get a new chance to make a first impression and, uh, and we have the really, really uh, deep privilege of opening young minds uh, to the world and, and solve problems and, and see them grow and flower and uh, so this is a good opportunity to talk about leadership. And I'll, I'll begin first just because this is a, a program that I've done for 35 years. Uh, why do we have a program called Tender Loving Care? Well, that would be a leadership decision on my part to try to say something about the importance of tender loving care, of TLC, of, of loving and forgiving and living within family units and, and cooperating together as a community and all the things that tender loving care has meant to me and what I wanted to instill. So that, that's, that's a trait of leadership. Uh, but I want I wanna go into this in a deep way and I wanna take a, uh, a look at a book and I'm commonly doing this with you uh, and guiding you to, to resource. Uh, but uh, as a uh, Board of Education member, I've been given this book, Becoming a Better Board Member, A Guide to Effective School Board Service. I think the emphasis here again is on service. Uh, leaders are service-oriented people. Uh, the director, again, the superintendent of the uh, uh, of the Board of Education of Upshur County, the superintendent of our schools, Scott Lampin, and uh, had different people stand up in our opening assembly. Uh, various uh, characteristics they may have: a first-year teacher, a teacher who's taught 30 years or more. Uh, all these people had a chance to stand. And, and uh, there were five of us who stood when he said, you are elected by your community for service. And, and that's the Board of Education. So, so uh, how do we be better leaders? How do we be better board members? And, and you may not feel called uh, to be on the Board of Education, but you might be a leader in your church. Uh, there are certainly needs for Sunday school teachers, scout leaders, 4-H leaders, uh, so many ways you can think about leadership and where you might feel that you want to fit in. If you are a father or mother, you are, of course, the leader of your family and your children look up to you, your stepchildren, your blended family, however that circumstance has evolved. Uh, leadership is important there. A person watching who may be a minister, of course, is, is leading a flock. Uh, the, the congregation uh, looks to that person who's a pastor for leadership. And so it is uh, that leadership comes up in various ways. Well, let's look at some characteristics of this. It's worthwhile doing. And if you want to look at the web page, I don't want to get bogged down in details tonight, but the Board of Education has a web page. And you can look up the, the goals and directions that uh, the Board of Education has for the school in Upshur County. And these are not original. We, we are borrowing from last year's goals and improving them. We're looking at goals from the state of West Virginia. We're looking at goals that all of us agree on are important priorities for our children. We want them to be employable. We want them to be lifelong learners. There are many, many things like that that motivate us uh, to set our goals. But, but let's look at how we got there and how leaders do this. First of all, uh, let's a quote uh, begin in this exercise from Albert Einstein one of the geniuses of our time. And, and he, he has uh, looked at the broad picture and come up with something I think that is quite appropriate. He said, perfection of means and confusion of ends seems to characterize our age. So we have perfected means, haven't we? Uh, this TV broadcast is much better than the TV broadcast was 35 years ago when I began. Uh, the means of broadcasting is nearly perfect. Uh, and, and we now have a, uh, a TV that has high definition 
uh, that we have at our house, and many of you all have TVs like that. And so, so the, the perfection of means is, is occurring more and more. Uh, but uh, Einstein reminds us that there is also confusion about the ends, and this is a characteristic of our age. So what are the ends? What, when you watch a TV program, do you want to be educated? Do you want to be entertained? Uh, do you want it to be morally uplifting? Uh, what, what, what are some of the uh, characteristics of the ends? What, what product we want? Our children, we also said this in our assembly today, our children are going to watch some 20,000 hours of TV <coughs> by the time they're raised. And that's actually more t TV time than they spend in school, uh, in the classroom, getting educated. Maybe that's more plus the homework and with what they do in class. So see, they watch an awful lot of TV, and is, is TV a wasteland, or is it building us up? What, what can we say about that? So we need to perfect not only the means, but we need to have our ends in mind. Well, uh, there's a um, Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare in 1960. Uh, John Gardner had a book, and he talked about the nature of leadership. And he identified six characteristics of leadership. I think it will guide us on our path as we examine leadership. And uh, you apply it to yourself. If the shoe fits, wear it, the old expression. First of all, leaders think longer term, beyond the day's crisis, beyond the quarterly report, beyond the horizon, thinking longer term. Each of us who serve on the Board of Education have been voted on by the public, and, and we stood up before you all, the citizens, and said, uh, we have a vision, a long-term vision for our students. Uh, we wanted to restore uh, some things that needed restored. We wanted to have uh, the best education that we could. We wanted our children to be on a world platform. I could say this about myself, uh, where they would be second to none, a Chinese student, an Indian student, uh, a student anywhere in the world. I want Upshur County students to be able to compete on a world stage because that's exactly where we're going. Uh, with, with what's happening to us. I would not be surprised at all if someone who's attending school uh, right now in Upshur County would, would not uh, be landing on the Mars someday. And maybe maybe also, um, uh, we haven't had a president from, uh, the, from West Virginia yet. Uh, we've been a state for 150 years. Uh, it's about time. And, and so uh, there's leadership. Uh, we can imagine today, plan today, uh, for that kind of leadership for the future. I remember the, uh, another cycle back before we selected Pam Balch to be the president of West Virginia Westland, uh, I was on a committee uh, studying the leadership characteristics of who we were going to select for the, be the president. And uh, one of my goals, I thought appropriately, would be we needed to elect someone who graduated from West Virginia Westland. Well, Pam Balch qualifies. Uh, she graduated in 1971. And, and so, so institutions that lead uh, build up leaders. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that's, that's a characteristic of another education institution in Buchanan, that is West Virginia Westland, but Buchanan Upshur school system also has every opportunity to train up leaders. Think the longer term. That, that's where I'm going with that statement. Think the longer term as uh, Secretary Gardner, of the, uh, who is Secretary of the Health, Education, and Welfare, uh, said. A second characteristic is look beyond the unit that you're heading, uh, and gas, grasp the relationship to larger realities. The larger organization from which you are a part, conditions each external to the organization and global trends. Um, I, I remember a leadership uh, talk uh, years ago I had in the VA, and uh, I liked the, um, the analogy. I understood this, uh, having a wife who's Filipino, having been in the Philippines and been in jungles, but. Uh, when you're in a jungle, you can't see very much. The overgrowth is, is so tremendous. And, and uh, so, so uh, if you want to see, you'd have to climb to the top of a hill and look out to get a larger vision, and, or maybe climb a tree and look out. And, and sometimes, sometimes uh, when we do that, we see that we're not uh, getting the bigger picture. I think the larger trend right now is that uh, we are going to have in the future a common curriculum uh, so that a student could move with their family because economically they'll have to move to where the jobs are. 
they could move to uh, say Arizona and, and, and if they're studying math in Upshur County, they'll be studying the same course of math in Arizona at the same time on a given day. We'll have a common core of curriculum all the way across America. It makes a lot of sense. That day is coming. We'll be here very soon. That is just one example of looking beyond the unit that we are heading and grasp its relationship to larger realities. Um, I, think, I think global trends, I, I mentioned this already, global trends, but um, I don't think we dare uh, deny that. Um, I was very proud of, of our own children, uh, Ronce and Maria, as they were growing up here. They went through the public school system and uh, they have achieved beyond my wildest dreams. I mean, I'm just very pleased uh, the, the careers uh, in a professional manner, uh, Maria being a doctor, uh, Ron's being a lawyer, uh, but, but they began right here in Upshur County. And one of the things uh, the mother and I told them over and over again is you are international. Now, yes, we said, and the children agreed that we have grounded them in West Virginia and they love West Virginia, but they also, especially since their mother was from Asia, I'm from West Virginia, that, that we, we were international as a family, and they bought that. That's a global trend for all of us to consider, and we need to, to figure out how to make that work. And we can do that day by day here, even in Upshur County. Uh, all sorts of, of ways uh, that, that we can talk about uh, what is important to understand internationally. I like it when, uh, when children start to compare labels, and I, if I look on the label of my shirt, I see that it's made in Italy. Uh, once upon a time, it was probably made in America. Uh, my shoes that I'm wearing, you can't see off screen now, but were made in Argentina. Uh, once upon a time, that was probably made right here in West Virginia. So you see the global trends. We also need to be <coughs> teaching our kids what to make here that we can sell to the world also. So looking beyond the unit that we're heading. And then a third uh, consideration is uh, uh, Secretary Gardner says, put heavy emphasis on the intangibles. Okay, a leader is always inspiring. Uh, I, I had the privilege of working um, two years with Oral Roberts in a ministry, uh, uh, part of the Oral Roberts ministry, part of uh, Oral Roberts University, which at that time was a uh, United Methodist University in Oklahoma. And uh, Oral Roberts uh, talked a lot about uh, increasing people's faith that he considered that one of his goals. That's an intangible, uh, faith, hope, and love. Uh, the Bible says these three are, are great, but the greatest of these is love. But faith, hope, and love, uh, those are intangibles, and we want to emphasize that. I, I began the program talking about this program being titled Tender Loving Care and being a message that's gone out for 35 years uh, because it is an intangible goal, but it's something that we can uh, look to, a vision, a, a value, a motivation, uh, something that we can understand intuitively that makes sense. Uh, I always, uh, when people question this, they isn't that corny to say tender loving care? I say, well, how about you? Do you want to be treated kindly or do you want to be treated meanly? You know, I mean, uh, we do unto others as they would do unto us. Kindness is much better than, than meanness or orneriness or, or or teasing, or bullying, or something like this. There are many things that are destructive that happen in behavior, but uh, loving and caring, and, and uh, that, that needs to be right at the top. These are intangibles. Uh, a, a fourth point uh, that uh, Secretary Gardner lifts up, and I'm following his guideline because I think it directs us down the path of leadership that we all need to do and teach to our children and, and then the organizations we belong to, whether it's Rotary or Lions or, or uh, the workplace setting we're in, if we're a foreman of a mine or, or maybe the church organization we belong to, we all need to be thinking about leadership and not just our teachers, not just our administrators or the Board of Education members. But a uh, fourth thing is to uh, recognize that uh, we all need to be outstanding managers uh, with the ability to set priorities. Uh, we all have uh, so much resource that we can work with, and, and managers learn how to set priorities, what, what needs to be done first, what needs to be done second, and so forth. It, it's a very important way that we can uh, go about things. 
And I remember when, when our, our first child was born, it was Maria. And so this was the first child I got to read to, the first child I got to teach songs to, and, and uh, of course, uh, uh, teach about life as, as she grew uh, uh, a year or so ahead of Roncevert. But anyway, I, I could see that Maria could not set priorities when, when she was uh, uh, telling a story. If, she, if I read the story to her, then I would ask her, what did we just read and share what you understand and, you know, just try to, to help her uh, uh, get beyond what might be the superficial meaning. And so, so she would have a hard time organizing priorities. But we, stuck, we stayed after that and, and she organized better and better. There was a time, again, I, I, as a father, I'm observing this, I, I could see that Maria uh, took a long time to make certain decisions. And I said, oh my goodness, uh, how can she be an ER doctor? How can she work in emergency rooms like, like Rasley and I do up at St. Joseph's or, or other situations where we deal with, with crises and, and manage the crises in people's lives? Uh, how can she do that? Because she's taking so long to make her decisions. And, and so, so I, was, I was trying to, uh, uh, to understand and teach uh, to Maria, uh, as managers do, uh, the establishment of priorities. Now, I'm very happy to report that Maria conquered all those uh, goals that she needed to, to uh, do, just as the Board of Education set goals this year. Uh, I set goals for Maria, and she, she mastered those goals and went on to bigger goals, and now she is a mother, and she's a doctor, and she's a teacher herself of not only her patients, but her colleagues. And, uh, and she does a great job in student health at the University of Michigan and in their oncology clinic. So we, we, we have to uh, think in terms of the long term and uh, creating and be outstanding managers ourselves if we have leadership role and also uh, set priorities. Uh, a fifth point is have the communication and political skills necessary uh, to cope with conflicting requirements of multiple constituencies. I, I've come to understand, and I hope you understand this too as you watch the presidential uh, ca candidates uh, vie for the office, the highest office in the land, we say, uh, that, that there are competing goals, aren't there? Uh, they have comp competing ideologies, and, and there's different paths that will get us to some of those things that we want. I, I'm sure all of us want full employment. I'm sure all of us want to have uh, healthy uh, students uh, who eat right and exercise enough and, and, uh, and can compete on the, the, the world stage. Uh, and, and, and the presidents, uh, people running for president, have something to say about many, many of these things in our life. Uh, but, but in the end, I think what we have to say and what I've come to understand is that almost everything is political. Almost everything is communication. And uh, that's, that's a top skill that we want to set. And I, I've come at this uh, dragging my feet at times. Uh, <clears throat> when, I took, uh, when I went to West Virginia Wesleyan College uh, I, in 1966 through 1970, I I uh, had to take a speech class before I could graduate. It was a requirement, one of the basic requirements of Wesleyan. And I'm grateful for liberal arts requirements. And, uh, and, uh, but I, I uh, didn't like to give speeches. And so I picked it my last semester of my senior year to take my required speech class. An unusual choice, but, uh, but that would show you how much I didn't like to give speeches. And yet I knew that it was important. Uh, so I jumped at this opportunity when this uh, opportunity to be on TV came up, not because I really knew anything about giving speeches or, or, or being on TV, but I wanted to develop that skill set. I wanted to be out there uh, where I could say that I know how to communicate and, and that I am political. I've run for office and been elected now, so I'm political. Uh, but, but all of that is leadership for all of us. I'm using myself as an example here tonight. Uh, and I'm using uh, this board manual, uh, How to Be a Better Board Member of the Board of Education, as an example of, of how important this is. Uh, you, uh, if you're an adult, you have someone watching you. Your children are watching you, and, and they, they're, they're observing you. It's not what you say, it's how you act that you're communicating to your children. Uh, you're political if you are uh, treating people fairly, uh, with justice. Uh, that's, a, that's a political concept, isn't it? Liberty and justice for all. 
we say about America. And, and so these are all political things we communicate. And we all have uh, multiple uh, conflicting requirements sometimes. Uh, my, 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 I, um, and I'm not using this, as, I'm not going to bring up any detail here to, tonight, but, but, but we got bogged down a little bit as a Board of Education a couple weeks ago uh, with, with a, a vendor type of, of discussion. Uh, there's a contract to who's going to sell uh, snacks at the uh, schools. And, uh, and so, so th there's competition, that's fine. Each of these uh, companies uh, have a right to do business, and in fact, it's the livelihood of these folks, and they need to, to have those contracts in order to do business. And so uh, we realized, uh, uh, I think after listening to both sides, that, that we had a, a, a contractual arrangement that was not actually clear. Uh, it wasn't communicated well enough uh, for, the, for the, the two bidders to be satisfied that they were getting a fair shake. And, and I said, at one point, I said, well, when kids are standing around these vending machines buying these snacks that they have a right to do, we'll make them uh, uh, good snacks, we'll make them nutritious snacks, but they have a right to buy them. Um, so so I, I, want, I want the conversation around that vending machine to indicate that the student understands the process, uh, how these vending machines were filled and how they got there was a fair uh, endeavor. And, and so we went back and forth, uh, not only to, to, to get the small detail uh, from, uh, if you will, uh, conflicting requirements of multiple constituencies, but I wanted the larger picture to be there, that we cared and, and that it was fair. And finally, a sixth term to look at tonight, uh, we need to, uh, if we're going to provide leadership, think in terms of renewal for organizations and its people. Uh, I began with... Uh, Scott Lampinen's comment that we get a, another chance at the beginning of school to create a first impression. Uh, that's a rare, rare uh, opportunity, as he pointed out, when he talked to the teachers and service workers and others at the school, uh, because the young children coming up uh, will form their first impression about school from their first grade teacher, their kindergarten teacher, and then every year they form that impression again. So we have to think in terms of renewal for an organization and its people. What do we have to renew about our schools? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to go reach back just a year or so. Uh, we, we began to look, for example, at the middle school, and we said, do we need to replace that school? Uh, it served a great purpose. Uh, some parts of it have been out there 80 years serving a good purpose. Some of it's out there in the, in the uh, 60s. I, when I went to school, uh, I think it was uh, maybe you started the new wings and so forth about 1957-58, and and I had a chance to uh, graduate uh, from from the new Buckhannon Upshur High School, fairly new at that time, 1966. Uh, it's 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 had its chance to serve purposes. Can it be renewed? Can it be uh, improved upon? And, and and we still use it as a building like that into the future. Well, it's possible. Uh, can we renew it by building a new school on a new campus out next to the high school? That was our vision. That was the vision of the Board of Education. We wanted to do that, and, and we, we, we were not, uh, we wanted to get the message out. We were not successful, at least in convincing enough people to vote for it, that it happened. But we, but always, think the broader way now, always in terms of renewal, we need to be thinking about that. Um, let me share a little bit uh, about how we do that. Uh, and and uh, you, may, you may say, well, I don't have time to do this. Well, uh, I do a lot of my best thinking uh, while I'm walking. I remember riding on house calls with my father, who was a guest on this program many times over the years, and he said he didn't have a radio in his Jeep as he made house calls because he liked to do thinking while he was riding along the road, uh, going to see his patient, and then coming home. And, and so it's the first thing to do uh, whenever you are uh, trying to lead is to uh, take a deep look inside. Okay, sounds simple, but it's not simple. A deep look inside. I was talking to a southern lady a while back, and she said, I'm going to deep clean this house. And uh, I didn't understand what she meant, but, but I, I know what a deep look inside is all about. And, and that's an important thing to do. Uh, I had a... a I talked to a missionary doctor a number of years ago, and he'd gone to India, 
and he got caught up in the monsoon rains and they came. He wasn't prepared for this. He had a jeep to go out to the villages and do his medical clinics and his missionary work, uh, but, he, but it was so muddy, so much rain, he couldn't even get out of the driveway. So he had to stay in his house and he had to go down on his knees and he said, Lord, he said in a prayerful way, in a deep way to God, he said, I'm a, I, I, I was called to uh, medicine, I was called to ministry, and, and I've studied all these years, 12, 14, 15 years, and now I'm here in India and I can't get out of the driveway. The monsoon rain's too bad. And, and, he, and, and the deep thought came to him and, and it was said, God was saying to him, he said, uh, God was saying, I'm the one who's going to de decide how far you go, how high you go. Your decision is to see how deep you go. And, and therefore, he looked at that time and said, this is a great time uh, to go deeper, uh, to be in prayer, to be uh, looking at what's important. So that's the first place to go. A second thing is to take a wide look around. And uh, I like, uh, and I told uh, the other board members, that I'm going to manage this year uh, as a board member by walking around, leadership by walking around, take a wide look around. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed, I enjoyed the idea of, uh, in the Bible, um, of uh, walking around Jericho seven times, blowing trumpets and, and, and uh, then the walls came tumbling down. And I, I don't know that there's walls that have to come tumbling down in our schools or anything like that, but. But, but I like to take the wider look, and, and I, I like to climb to the top of the hill and look out around things. We, we have uh, uh, wonderful opportunities here uh, because our, our, everything is moving fast and so forth, but, but we have a fairly stable uh, community. Uh, our economy has been fairly blessed in West Virginia, one of four states that has held on through this recession. Uh, so we have a time to take a wide look around and decide our priorities. And finally, take a long look ahead. Look down the road, look around the bend, uh, decide what we can uh, and should be doing. What do we do greatly here? Uh, one of the things we do great is family. Uh, West Virginia has more intact families than any other state in the union. And, and we can build on that. We can make even our families even better. There may be other goals, but this is just an example. And I really thank you for joining us once again on our program, Tender Loving Care. I thank you for the comments on the street as I walk up and down and around town and people say they've watched and they want to know this or that about something we've mentioned and appreciate that. Until the next time, though, this is Dr. Greenbrier Almond thanking you for joining us on our program, Tender Loving Care. Special thanks to Channel 3 for this opportunity to come your way each week. And we'll see you next week.